Hey guys, this week on Tech Tips, we're gonna tackle soldering irons. The first thing you wanna do is turn on your soldering station, but if you notice when I turn mine on, nothing happens, and that's because it's just a, something I've been doing forever. I always keep mine hooked to a power strip, so you have to turn on the power strip and that. I think this two-step process just makes it a little safer, especially if you have it in a home, uh, where if you turn this off and you're not sure if you turn it off, if you always make a step where you turn that off and then turn off your power strip, you're, you're gonna be pretty, pretty straightforward and safe. Things you're gonna need for the project is, I would definitely recommend purchasing a helping hand, and this is what this is. You can get this at Harbor Freight pretty cheap. I use a shrink wrap or shrink tubing to uh, wrap around these to stop these from biting into the wire too deep. And uh, I've had good luck with this and it's a very easy process to do. And uh, so there's that, but either way, you'd be fine if you had that. The next thing you wanna have, of course, is some solder. And uh, it's a pretty easy thing to get. Uh, you can buy it pretty much anywhere, any hardware store. Uh, you can get lead free or lead in. Lead in's a little easier to do use, but it's a little more toxic. And that brings me to number two, which is uh, a lot of times you wanna use a fan or some kind of mask. I don't use a mask, I use a fan, but unfortunately for today's video, I can't turn on the fan, it'll be too loud. But the fan stops the smoke that comes off the uh, soldering iron that would, you would breathe in, it blows it away. So either way, I think you're safe, but you definitely wanna consider that. It's, uh, it's very important. And then that brings us on to the last safety feature, which is gonna be eye protection. You could buy eye protection for about a dollar at Harbor Freight. So there's no reason not to have it. So you get that. All right, so let's talk about the basics of using a soldering station. Um, some of you guys will have one just like this, where you have uh, a, a controllable temperature. And some are gonna have an iron that looks just like this, but doesn't have this. And that means this, the temperature is preset for you. Either way, we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna talk about the iron and how to use it. Now, uh, a lot of concern about soldering irons is safety. In other words, hurting yourself, burning yourself. And there's a couple tricks that I can give you that will hopefully help you in not harming yourself. Now, the first thing is pretty obvious. Don't touch any of the metal parts, uh, regardless that they're on or off, unless you're changing it out and uh, it's turned off. But don't turn it, touch anything. I think a lot of people feel like there's a safe point. Maybe this is hot and this part isn't. Anything past the rubberized uh, piece right here or the plastic housing for your handle is uh, in the danger zone, so don't go ahead and use it. The biggest problem people are gonna have is this wire that whether it's plugged into a station like this or just plugged into an outlet, if it's not very long and sometimes what happens is it gets caught on things and this kind of jerks out of your hand or it causes you to drop it. So you wanna make sure there's nothing to obstruct your way. So if you're left-handed, put your uh, soldering station on your left side. There's even an adjustment on the station like this to put it on the other side. If you're right-handed, keep it over here and keep everything out of the way, including these helping hands. You want nothing to obstruct the uh, when you go from the holster to over here. Let's go ahead and do an output jack, uh, something that's pretty straightforward. Um, and I think it's the best uh, project to start when you're starting to solder. A lot of times it's uh, about plugging in pickups or wiring and that stuff. Just keep it easy. Start with something as simple as an output jack. Uh, something like on this guitar right here, we're gonna go ahead and replace this output jack. So when you're dealing with a guitar and solder, you have to understand that if you drip any of the solder on the instrument, you could damage the finish. So you wanna make sure to use something to drape it off, a drop cloth, a uh, painter's cloth. But the other thing that you wanna do, like something like this, where it's hard to drape a cloth over the side of a guitar, believe it or not, I use painter's tape. Something that's just, it's my tried and true, I use it for everything. Uh, you'll see it a lot on this channel. And that's because when you work with people's guitars, things they care about, you wanna make sure you don't damage them. And a little painter's tape goes a long way. So in this case, we wanna go ahead and take this uh, apart. Now you don't have to disassemble this while it's still connected. I'm just doing so that way I don't have to worry about it. In this project, this is a Switchcraft uh, output jack. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it apart and desolder it. And there's something I wanna show you, and this is the first tip, uh, no pun intended, when regarding a soldering iron and hurting yourself. A lot of people, when they're concerned about burning themselves, they always think about touching the actual iron. And I think most burns happen when the iron is touching something else because you're transferring heat. So there's a couple things that I want you to be aware of. And one of the things is distance. So I'm gonna use this metal rod to illustrate uh, something. This iron is very hot, uh, obviously, and it's all primed to go. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and touch it onto this rod and hold it right here. Now, just for illustration purposes, while I'm talking to you, I'm gonna keep it connected. You can tell right now that obviously I'm holding the rod and there's no issues, and that's because to transfer the heat takes a while. This is a pretty thick uh, 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 Allen wrench, uh, and it's uh, got a good distance, about six inches. So as I hold the iron onto it, sure, where the iron's touching is really getting hot, but over here, it's not. And I could do this probably uh, something like this thick, this long, five minutes maybe, hold this on there without any issues. So why I use that as an illustration is I wanna talk about this. Obviously, if I was to desolder this right here, holding this, the transfer of heat would be about an inch away. And if I do it in about four seconds, which is how long I think it takes to heat up a piece of solder this small, uh, I shouldn't have any issues. But what I wanna do is show you uh, some couple tools. One is these things, which I like these, they're easy. But you get the idea, anything like this to hold it. So the first thing you have to do is start with new wire. Don't ever re-solder old wires like this back to something, okay? Uh, what I do is I look at the wires and I look for any kind of heat damage, anything on them that I find uh, an issue, and I snip them off clean so all the braids and the wire are level. Perfect. And then same here. And then I, I, like, I like them to be uniform. The last person maybe didn't do it that way. And don't worry about the colors and where they go. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So we have both wires. Let's go ahead and start the process. Now on something like this, like an output jack, we don't need a whole lot of bare wire. We're not gonna be fusing the wires to each other. So we want about three millimeters. And you just kind of guesstimate that. Now here is the important part. You wanna seriously look at this and make sure that you didn't damage or break any of the braids. If you damage any of the braids, the little wires, you're gonna create more resistance. You're gonna create a problem there. So go ahead, now do the second one. Same thing, about three millimeters down. Go ahead and remove that and twist. And again, we have no damaged braids. And that's why I told you, you wanna start with new fresh wire. You know you're gonna have great connectivity. And especially after we do the second part. So now, before we solder these wires to the output jack, we're going to go ahead and add solder to them. You wanna make sure that both points of what you're soldering to have solder. You do not melt the solder on the iron. You actually warm up the wire, which only takes a second and then add the solder to the wire. And you'll notice on this one, the same thing as before, we'll bring the iron, go ahead and warm up the wire. It only takes a second, like I said, count to four. One, two, three, four, and then use that. And you see how the iron, the heat heating up the wire, it looks like it just brought the solder right into the wire. Wipe off your excess. In that four seconds, we did not damage or burn melt the wires. We have a good amount of solder on there. We're gonna go ahead and heat this arm up real quick. Go ahead and take the solder. And I use a swiping motion. That's how I finish that out. Let me show you up close. Okay, perfect. Now on this one side, same thing. Turn that. And the same thing as before, go ahead and use the solder. Now, that is simple and easy. And keep in mind, you don't wanna cook these parts out. That's why you wanna get the sense of it. And you notice I'm counting to four or five. Take notice that when you solder, count out loud. You know, one, two, three, pick notice. If you notice, you know, over time, that's what's happened with me. I notice like, I can look at solder now and I go, okay, that's like 10 seconds. Okay, that's like two seconds. And, and that's how it goes. So we already decided, we already know red is going to be ground, which is different. And so ground goes in that terminal. And again, here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna heat up the, this side, run it through. Same thing as before, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. And see, this is where it's nice to have an extra set of hands. Same thing, we wanna heat this up. So we heat the solder from this side and run this through. And there's a couple things you do. Some people like to bend the wire down and in. Some people snip it off. Uh, what I do for these is I bend it down and then I add just a little solder, just a little bit 
to the inside to firm that wire up and get a better connection. And you're good to go. What if you put it in and it doesn't work? Well, guess what? You have a 50-50 chance to get it right. If you put the ground wire where the hot and vice versa and it doesn't work, go ahead and just desolder them or resolder them together. You can't hurt anything. There's no real current going through these. If your question right now is what about active? Well, active is different. You need to watch that video. Click right here uh, to talk about uh, uh, those jacks and how those work differently. We won't talk about this in this case. This is straightforward for what this is. That's how you use the soldering iron to install an output jack. It's a great first project. It's a great way to do it. You got some safety issues out of the way now. The only thing I want to teach you is when you're done with the soldering iron, what you want to do is clean it off real good, whether you use a brass sponge or a foam sponge with water. Right. Now, once you have your iron nice and clean like this, we go ahead and ten it. I just use a little solder and then just wipe it just to make sure it's got a good coating on there. And then it's okay to put away. That'll seal it and stop it from corroding. And then, like I said, you would go ahead and turn it off. And then now you know to turn off your power strip. So if you turn it back on, nothing, you know you're safe. The last tip for you guys is you can also use things called heat sinks. And they're like this. You can get these again from Stu Mac and places like that, uh, all parts. What they do is they allow you to clip it onto terminals out of the way and when you solder this will absorb up the heat again don't touch this but that will help uh, stop from burning up these uh, boards these little wafer boards and stuff so those are a great idea I'll use those a lot um, but generally speaking I just learned how to kind of do the temperament to not burn up these parts what happens if you put a soldering iron too long on a part well here's an example of somebody who soldered this uh, and I noticed that they burnt this part of the board right there that is real common so that's what you can do. You can definitely see it's damaged. If it's damaged, should you use it? Ah, you know, that's a that's a judgment call. Uh, again, I always go with no, but could you use it? Of course, there's all kinds of things you can use. Well, there you go, guys. Another week of tech tips. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have a suggestion for a tech tip, put it down in the description down below. Helps me figure out which ones to do every week. I'm uh, willing to tackle as many of them as you guys got. And uh, as always, I want to thank the patrons for sponsoring these shows. And until next time, Know your gear.